In this video we're going to see how to create a simple WCF service and then run the service on a um, IIS server and then next use a client machine to uh, connect to that service and test it using the WCF test client tool. And We'll build the service using Visual Studio. So here we have Visual Studio open. And we're going to create a new project go to the um, Visual C Sharp web WCF service application and we'll just click the or select the, de the default name for this um, project WCF service 1 and right now Visual Studio is going to create all the stubs it's necessary to create a basic WCF service um, the only thing that I want to switch here is the uh, the binding type that the default uses. We're going to use the basic type so that we don't have any kind of authentication problems when we want the client to connect to this service. So to do that we're going to have to edit the w or the web.config and for the video we'll just um, we'll show one little bug in Visual Studio. Notice how if I right click on the web.config we don't see any item for a WCF tool but if we go to tools up in the main menu then select WCF Service Configuration Editor. This uh, Microsoft Service Configuration Editor opens up. I then close it and now I go back to the web.config, right click it and now we can edit it in WCF Configuration. One little bug in Visual Studio, no big deal. Okay, so now we have the... Uh, we're looking at the web config using this uh, handy tool and I'm going to go to the services endpoints. And notice how by default Visual Studio created a WSHTTP binding binding. I'm going to uh, change that to a basic HTTP binding and then save it. Close out. And then I'll rebuild. Okay, so now technically we have all that we need to run this service in terms of code. And I just ran it and you can see that we have the service running and the WSDL is right there. So it is a working piece of a working service right now. But now it's running on the development machine. I want to take that server, I mean that service, and uh, move it to a production server or a staging server, a live web server so that other uh, consumers can utilize that service. So to do that I need to go to the directory where that code lives. And let's see, WCF service 1. And I'm going to copy the bin file, the bin directory, the .svc file, and the web.config file. Just those three things. Now I'm going to move it to the production machine, which happens to be on the same network that I'm on. Just paste it in there. Okay, so now I move the uh, necessary files from the development machine over to the server machine. And now I'm going to remote into the server machine and set up IIS to run the service. Okay, so here we are in the um, server machine. I'm going to go into IIS. Let's go to the default website or add it to the default website. So I'm going to right click on default website and then go to add application. Give an alias name for this and I'll call it WCF service. And now we have to point to where that thing lives, where the code lives, and I put it here so you can put it anywhere you want. And it's in the temp file, the temp directory. Okay, now I click OK. Now the IIS server has the application added 
the, or the service added to it. So now, uh, theoretically, consumers can connect to this web service and um, and run that method that Visual Studio created, the default one, this one, get data, and this one for that matter. Okay, so now let's we're now back in the development machine, and we want to run a client against that service. So I'm going to, um, you know, to keep things simple, let's let's close this solution and create a new client. Um, let's do a Windows form. And I'll call it uh, WCF client. Okay, now I'm going to add the reference to that web service. And so I'm going to go to references and go to add service reference. And now in the address bar here, we can type in the URL of where that service exists and or that. Um, yeah, where the service exists. And here we have the URL of jetedge.webhop.net, the WCF service slash service one dot SVC. And just for clarity here, notice, let's go back to the production server. Notice, first of all, this machine or this web server lives at jetedge.webhop.net. And underneath the web default website, we have a application WCF service and so if we compare it to this one notice how it looks like a directory but in this case it's not really a directory it's actually an application um, or an alias called WCF service and then inside of that we have the code and if we go to content view we can see that code and it's called service1.svc so here we are in the default website WCF service is the application and then slash service one dot SVC which points to the actual excuse me WCF service okay so let's go back to our client and let's click go now Visual Studio is connecting to that service and it said one service was found at this address so that's a good thing and the namespace we're going to give it is service reference one. We're just going to do all the defaults. So let's click OK. So at this point, we have the reference to that service. So we can now add a couple, uh, is that a button? We'll add a text box. A label for the response and a text box for um, our entry. So let's see here. It's our button. Alright, so I just instantiated a uh, the service one client by referencing by pointing to the service reference one. I'm going to call that method. Response. Okay, so this should work. I'll enter one, two, three, four, five, six. And there it is. You entered one, two, three, four, five, six.